why are your movies so long? I mean, three hours, seriously? That's the single most asked question from Western audiences. Why is the runtime so long? To which clearly I have a defense response, instant response, which is Avengers, Babylon, uh, Irishman. Oh yeah, they were three hours long too. Wow. On a, on a more rational side, right? More movies uh, in uh, in Hollywood or in European cinema tend to be around the two hour mark or less as compared to say Indian cinema, more movies tend to be closer to the three hour mark or more. <laughs> and the question that we're answering today is why is that? Why, are, why is the runtime so much? And what's the connection to the mathematics of it? Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to the Iron Man Experience, a podcast about society, art, entertainment, culture, pets, a little bit of geopolitics, sports, and of course, movies. And in this ongoing series, I introduce Indian cinema to Western audiences, to global audiences, or those set of people who have limited view of Indian cinema. They think Indian cinema equals Bollywood, which it is clearly not. And so what is it? And I, I try to be I try to present it in a very simplistic manner so that uh, people who are engaging, interacting, reacting with Indian content have a better reference to context. And so if you're viewing this episode as episode one, you're probably missing out the chronology and you might not be able to connect the dots. So my request to you is go back and watch the first episode and then come to this episode only then because without understanding the geography, the history, how we came here, only then you may be able to relate to the mathematics of it. So I've divided into three parts, geography, history, mathematics, and there'll be more. But as for this episode, first watch those and then come back. Okay, with that, runtime and the mathematics of Indian cinema. Given that India is home to 1.4 billion people, of which I would give or take at least billion, billion plus people watch movies on a regular basis. You're talking about 28 states, you're talking about 16 majorly spoken languages, you're talking about at least 300 other sub languages, and you're talking about 23, 24 film industries or uh, film centers which generate movies. And this audience, captive audience out there waiting to consume your content. Now think of yourself as Mr. James Cameron or Mr. Steven Spielberg, and you're trying to make a movie in India. And the fundamental goal is to make sure that I get the majority of the wallet share of the this 1.2 billion people. I'm, I'm discounting. So 1.4, assume 300 million don't watch movies, right? So you still have 1.1 billion people. So to, just to round it off, you have a billion people who can potentially watch your movie. How do you capture that audience? One can argue do you want to capture that audience because idea is to just tell your story and that some people will like it and some people won't. While that is absolutely true, but it also has to do with economics, mathematics. You can't keep on doing that business model. It's not sustainable. Where is the money? Show me the money. Yeah. Who's going to fund for it, right? I mean, those passion projects, who's going to fund, fund for it? And that's been the challenge for many, many uh, film um, creators for generations. I'm sure it is no different in the United States or Hollywood. Uh, in India as well, where do you get the money? You have to make a story, a film that appeals to a larger audience. Think of Avatar way of the water. Why is it made, made on such a grand, big scale, big spectacle? Excuse me, so that more people come and watch it. That's at a simple, simple level at a bottom line level, I will make a spectacle. And you know how light that script is. Uh, the movie is heavy in terms of CGI graphics and next gen settings and setups and spectacle. But the content is not all that great. Right, the, and so if you go back to Avengers, if you go back to the Star Wars, uh, and I'm the original Star Wars fan, uh, episode four, five and six, but none later as much because that was more content heavy along with um, special effects, uh, which kind of tilted the balance in, in subsequent episodes where the VFX overtook the content. I, my in my limited view or understanding of cinema and life in general 
but the same logic and um, mathematics hold to, holds true in India. So the producer, the creator, is investor is looking at a paisa vasool, money recovered. That's the literal translation. How do you recover the money? Then you have to create a story or a spectacle which the majority of this billion people come to watch. What is the breakup of this billion people? That 60% of the population is below the age of 30. So then what storyline do I uh, make for these people so that they are compelled to watch this movie? I should have nice song and dance sequences, bright pastels, good action sequences, da da da, and all those things which appeal to say the romance uh, to that section of the audience. But then there's this 40% of the audience. Uh, that's a huge 400 million people can who have actually have a lot of money to spend as well. So how do I capture that? So, well, then I have to have a drama angle to it. I need to have some intelligence thrown in here and there and some emotion and all that. A plus B plus C becomes a movie. What, what happens in turn? The runtime becomes longer. There is a little bit of romance, comedy, tragedy, action, titillation, song numbers, dance sequences. And then you're wondering, well, what happened to the story? Well, that takes a backseat. Right now, up front and center is return of investment. If along the way you make a great story that also has a return of investment, but the ability to manufacture that is exceedingly difficult. And so most producers fall back on this formula to attract a larger audience. What could be the theme uh, which attracts majority of this billion people? Say a nationalistic theme, a patriotic theme. Some of these themes could appeal. There will be very few who will say, no, I don't like this. Right? So therefore, those kind of movies generally tend to be more popular. Then what could be other themes? There, there could be a romance theme, which is again spreads across the length and breadth of the country. And then we have the star culture. Story aside, I love Mr. Salman Khan. I love Mr. Shah Rukh Khan or Mr. Rithik Roshan. Story aside, I will just go and ogle, gape, stare in awe of this person. <laughs> Nothing wrong in it, right? I mean, that, that's the star power. And that guarantees an opening, which means if a particular star um, makes a movie, then you know that their fan following will at least watch the movie on day one, day two, day three, that is Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Can you recover your money within those three days? That seems to be the math. And so in trying to make sense of this mathematics, it impacts the runtime. Imagine you are a creator, you have to make almost like two movies in one. So one movie is in the first half where the movie goes through a, almost like a mini act one, mini act two and mini act three, but leaves you at a cliffhanger so that you don't exit the theater uh, at the interval mark and come back and resume from uh, say another mini act one, act two, act three and ending in a crescendo. And, and so when you combine this, you, your script writer will be like going bonkers, like how do I do that? How do I? And so therefore, those who are able to manage that, you stand up and clap like, oh my God, think of RRR and the interval scene. And you're like, wow, I would want to come back and watch more. Now, one could always argue that once you've bought the ticket, whether you exit, how does it matter? It matters because the word of mouth matters. People who have exited midway, they will go and spread it to 10 other people, post a tweet, write a comment, and then the word spreads that this is a bad movie. And then you're affected the next day. And so you have to ensure that the guy is inside and sticks to that three hour movie because you, you want that audience member to exit the theater and say, it was a paisa vasul for me. It was a return of investment for me too. What was my return of investment? Braving through traffic, two hours of traffic, not finding parking, paying double the price for popcorn, as compared to the price of the ticket. And then finally, of all the struggles that I have, the socioeconomic struggles that I have in life, I come in, I just want to be entertained. I just want to be suspended in disbelief. Is there anything wrong in that logic? I don't think so. There is merit in that logic. Why would I not want to see a movie or invest my time, my energy, my effort into a movie, which gives me this three hours of relief? There's nothing wrong with that. 
And so is, is, a lot of creators cater to that sentiment, right? So one has to understand it's, it's a struggle outside the theater. Why would I want to watch the same struggle inside the theater? You know, and so inside, I want a spectacle. I want my hero to look uh, who could be five feet something to look like 15 feet something more. I, I would want to uh, see slow motion action sequences, breathtaking locales. It is my dream. Uh, it's not just the song and dance dream sequence, but it is my dream. And go and ask uh, tourism Switzerland. They will tell you that so much of contribution has come from India. People, first timers uh, who have uh, ventured out into Switzerland instead of going. And India has a ton of mountains and snow capped places, which are, if not equal, better than Switzerland. But um, people have gone to uh, Geneva and other places, Zurich and all that. It's courtesy movies. It's courtesy those song sequences. And so it is taken extremely seriously and songs are such, and I, I will have to have a separate section for this, which kind of almost guarantee you some kind of a return. There have been enough instances where the movie itself has not done very well, but that particular song inserted, and, and, I, and I know you don't like insertion of song which interrupts the flow, but that song has made people come back to the theater and watch the whole movie. What do you say to that? <laughs> and songs bind the nation. It may not be the culture in, in United States or Europe, but in India, songs are a bonding thing. It's played in, uh, in all facets of life. It's there in colleges, in discotheques, in pubs, which is the, which is the obvious ones. It's there in journeys. It's there uh, in social gatherings. You know, when you see some septuagenarians and octogenarians uh, sitting at the park, they all get together and sing these songs, these movie songs. And I think that's beautiful. That's wonderful. And so uh, in Indian movies, the songs tend to have strong lyrics, which forward the story, you know, so it is in it kind of, it's a musical representation of the story or narrative moving forward. Now, that being said, there are also those which have absolutely zero connection to the movie, right? And which is just there. But think of the recent example that comes to my mind is a movie called War. Rithik Roshan and uh, Mr. Tiger Shroff starred in that movie and that song, which is a fabulous chart buster song, um, uh, Jai Jai Shiv Shankar. But it had no context to the movie. But guess who's complaining? No one. No one. Right. So to view Indian movies, as is the case everywhere, you to wear these two hats, right? One is this commercial pot boiler, popcorn entertainer, which suspends this, your logic, physics, belief system. Um, and on a complete side note, you know, a lot of people have commented upon uh, RRR defying physics. Well, so does DC, so does so many Fast and Furious, so does so many other movies, right? So. It's no exception. So there shouldn't be a shock and awe element in that. Anywho, so the point is the, the Indian mathematics is very, very simple and it caters to the audience and the endeavor for the creators is to cast the net wide and try and rope in as many people as possible. And so that they have the funds or the budget to make their passion project. You know, because once you make profit, then you can make those, I really wanted to make this kind of a movie, not this. So that's been the struggle for Indian cinema. And this is not just limited to Hindi cinema. This is as prevalent in uh, Bengali cinema or any other regional cinema, like the Malayalam industry and all that. If they had the budget of RRR, they, I can tell you, they have a ton of brilliant stories. They could do something magical out there. And so in the next segment, I, I hope you got a sense on why the run times are long and what is the socioeconomic impact on the run times and how difficult it is for makers to make a movie. In the next segment, I'm going to talk you through about how do you start watching Indian movies? You don't want to be in a situation where you start with the wrong movies and then you either get overwhelmed or underwhelmed or you have a um, opinion which does not interest you interest you further 
So not that it is a guaranteed win, but at least uh, logically thinking, um, I would give you a sequence of movies. We say, start with these, then gradually up the tempo into this, and then finally watch these. So stick around till uh, that we come up with the next episode. And until then, stay well and stay safe and a happy new year. Cheers.